Literature gives us the opportunity to experience lives, perspectives, and worlds different from our own. Though remember, friend, a good story has many readings, and this is but one. You and your classmates are thrilled to be going on your first overnight trip. However, it's a pretty long ride, and before long, you all start dozing off. Probably just super tired from all the excitement, right? But right before you enter Dreamland, you have just enough time to glimpse that the bus driver is now wearing a gas mask? What the fuck? <laughs> when you wake up, you're now on an abandoned island with a strange metal collar strapped around your neck. And then you're instructed that unless you and your classmates fight to the death, until only one of you is left, you'll all be killed instead. Oh boy, this got dark quick. Right from the start, it's clear things aren't going to end well for the main character Shuya Nanahara and his fellow students in Koshin Takami's 20th century classic, Battle Royale. But as you know, oh, you haven't read the novel, or the manga adaptation, or seen the film. None of the above, huh? No prob. We'll get you primed for Battle Royale, and show you why this is one of the most influential pieces of modern dystopian literature. Let the games begin. Thanks so much to World Anvil for helping us discuss important worlds in literature. So you haven't read Battle Royale by Koshin Takami. Written in 1996, but first published in 1999, the book and its adaptations birthed a whole subgenre of modern horror literature by offering a terrifying vision of how a despotic government can use violence to control and desensitize its citizens. No surprise then, while this episode will be PG-13 rated, the book itself is full of graphic violence, including sexual violence, meaning reader discretion is advised. You know, things are about to get pretty dark. Are you still cool experiencing the story firsthand? Okay, here we go. You are Shuya Nanahara, a student in an alternate history version of Japan called the Republic of East Asia. You grew up in an orphanage, and over the years, you've become a bit of a rebel. You idolize Bruce Springsteen and secretly play rock and roll which in your nation is forbidden as immoral. You've also been in school with most of your classmates for years and know exactly the sort of stuff about them that any student would know about their peers. And you're loyal to a strong core group of friends. Though unfortunately for all of you, one way that your government maintains control over its population is through a military program that periodically kidnaps classes of third-year junior high students and forces them to fight to the death. And that's why you find yourself and your schoolmates on that island we mentioned up top. You're told you must fight each other until there's only one person left alive. Most of you initially imagine that you'll refuse to participate until it's revealed that those collars that you're all wearing on your necks now are actually explosive devices that will detonate if you refuse to take part in this grim exercise. Then, in a twisted luck of the draw, you're each given a weapon of vastly different power. Anything from a submachine gun to a boomerang, or in your case, a Swiss Army knife. And furthermore, you quickly realize that some of your classmates are really genuinely into the idea of killing everyone else, whether it's out of fear for their own lives or genuine sociopathic tendencies. Particularly, your primary antagonist, a gifted but emotionally stunted student named Kazuyo Kiriyama, who, if we jump a little ahead in the story, methodically kills off more than his share of your fellow classmates. If any of you are going to survive to be the victor, you're definitely going to have to go through him. But now jumping back to the beginning, your best friend Yoshitoki is murdered by soldiers when he tries to attack the program's leader. And out of loyalty to him, you team up with his crush, Noriko Nakagawa, and vow to protect her to the end. Which won't be easy, since she took a bullet to the leg trying to defend Yoshitoki. You also ally yourself with a recent transfer student named Shogo Kawada, who seems suspiciously good at this game actually. He then reveals to you that he was the winner of the previous program, and he transferred to your school because he had a plan to take revenge on the program's leaders and escape the island. Now, since you both want to increase the odds that all three of you survive, you come to an agreement that you have to treat Noriko's bullet wound before she gets too weak to continue. So while your new alliance takes a moment to help Noriko, let's take a look at how Battle Royale has influenced pop culture. In the years since Koshin Takami's novel was published, the concept of humans competing in a terrifying murder game has become an increasingly popular genre, which as you may have guessed by now, is called the Battle Royale genre. TV shows like Squid Game, games like Fortnite, and dozens of films and stories were all influenced by this novel. And while Suzanne Collins says she didn't read the novel until after she'd written The Hunger Games, maybe read both novels and draw your own conclusions. Of course, if she did take any inspiration, she would be in good company. 
Estacame himself definitely took inspiration from previous works. Specifically, he's described how his great enthusiasm for Stephen King's The Long Walk, a 1979 dystopian novel about a state-sponsored fatal fun walk, inspired the central concept of Battle Royale. But in Takami's take on this particular dystopian plot, the idea that you may be forced to kill your friends or be killed by your friends serves the government in the story by undermining friendships, reducing the citizens' ability to organize resistance and rebellion. And while this might seem far-fetched to some, fascist regimes frequently use campaigns of violence to instill fear and mistrust in their populations since frightened citizens are more likely to look toward a strongman figure to save them from their scary neighbors. Of course, you, Shogo, and Noriko have chosen to risk trusting each other, a bold act of defiance in the face of state-sponsored fear. And luckily, this has paid off for you all, since each of you are among the final surviving students. Though it should be noted that other classmates of yours aren't so lucky with this tactic. A different group of close-knit friends becomes so paranoid that they shockingly turn on each other in an instant, leaving none of that group alive. And then there's Kazuyo. When your trio is finally forced to face him in a bloody car chase and shootout, he's killed, but not before badly wounding Shogo, who struggles on despite knowing he won't survive without swift medical attention. Now, with the clock ticking on Shogo's life, the three of you face some very difficult decisions. Like, will you now turn on each other? And if you don't, can you complete Shogo's plan for revenge and escape? Ooh, and not to mention the next totally bonkers twist that's just gonna be one of the things you have to learn for yourself when you read the book. Unlike more conventional horror tales, in Battle Royale, anyone you meet can be the killer or could be the next victim. And thanks to Takami's writing, you'll find yourself empathizing with nearly all of them. After all, the story's real big bad is the fascist government forcing the students to fight, and that government's going to be much harder to take out than a 15-year-old with a boomerang, especially if everyone's afraid of their own friends. So perhaps, one of the book's main takeaways is this. The first step to opposing oppression is to learn to rely on your fellow citizens instead of a charismatic strongman. But who am I to say? You should totally read it for yourself and see what you think. In fact, you know what? Why don't you borrow my copy and the next round of lattes are on me. Oh, and you know what? While you're reading about the world Koshin Takami created, I think I'm going to do a little more forging of my own world over in World Anvil. So a bunch of us at Extra Credits have been crafting our own worlds for years now, be they RPGs, novels, or video games. And if you're like us, you know how much work it is keeping all of the disparate elements of your world-building project organized. And if you're also like us, we know you're going to love World Anvil. It's an award-winning toolset used by millions of world builders, writers, and gamers that helps you create, store, and organize your world setting. And honestly, we cannot say enough good things about this toolset. You can craft entire RPG campaigns, track timelines, family trees, and diplomatic relationships, add awesome interactive elements to maps to help bring your story to life, organize your thoughts and worlds with their nifty and linkable freeform whiteboard feature, and then once everything is forged, you can easily share what you've built with your readers, patrons, players, or whoever. In other words, exactly the tools that let me focus on the fun parts of world building, and I'm sorry I'm excited about this because I love this freaking thing. And with over 25 stunning visual themes, it's perfect for all genres, from sci-fi to fantasy, space opera to historical fiction, most of which I've utilized across my genre-bending and ever-expanding Rift's Elden Ring 17th Century Rom-Com, Gungeon, Stargate, Kingdom Hearts, and Jim Carrey Filmography RPG campaign. Wait, where do we leave off? Oh, right! Our band of intrepid heroes had just vanquished the mask. And since back in the day I melted this VHS tape I'm about to reference, I wanted the heroes to travel back or forward in time to the Dino Riders universe to free all of our flightless bird friends from the evil Rulons. And you can bet I was using World Anvil's Chronicles tool to seamlessly link my timelines and maps as they jumped around dimensions, knocking off brain boxes. Dino Riders! <laughs> So if you want to be able to create, store, and organize all of the cool elements of your RPG, novel, video game, or whatever you're making, not to mention just having an awesome time doing it, you can check out World Anvil right now absolutely free. And for a limited time, you can receive 40% off any annual membership by using the code extra credits. Then, not only will the awesome worlds you create come to life faster, but you'll also be helping out us at EC in the process. Once again, that's code extra credits for 40% off any annual membership, and thanks so much for your support. We can't wait to see the worlds you build. Would you believe me if I told you that Ahmed Ziad Turk, Alicia Bramble, Angela Valenciana, Arcalite Games, Casey Muscha, Dominic Valenciana, Joseph Blame, and Skylar Holmes were all legendary patrons? Because it's true! 